What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video we're talking about some of the best smelling cheap fragrances that I have come across. Some of these are new releases and or just new to me in my collection and some of these I've had for a little while and they just deserve to be here because they smell that good. So we're going to be covering 10 very specific fragrances. I'll try to have links down below for anybody who wants to check them out. Stay tuned. This first one's very new to the collection, and I think it's quietly been one of the best designer releases of 2023. It is Isimiyaki Lo Disi Por Om Vetiver. So what's special about this one? It's a watery vetiver. It manages to be earthy, a freshness from this geranium. There's a little bit of a sweet tone to it, but it adds more of a mint, I guess a minty freshness with that watery accord. It's a fresh water smell. Uh, not loaded down with citrus. It manages to be a fresh watery woody scent, basically is what it is, which makes it hyper versatile. It is a little bit of a zesty, minty feel from that geranium. Smelling it just now, it hit me right away. This is good stuff. Slightly above average performance. Falls in that six to eight hour range in longevity on my skin. It's a bona fide cheap fragrance already. I, I bought it three months ago, maybe four months ago. And it was cheap then, and it's a release for this year, this calendar year. This is great stuff. Issey Miyake as a house is still putting out great flankers in the low Dissy line, as well as their other lines. I've been buying more and more stuff from the house lately, and they never seem to disappoint. So this is one that if you're a fan of vetiver, but maybe you don't like the more challenging, earthy, smoky, dirty vetivers, you want something fresh that you can just reach for all the time and still smell a little bit more interesting than the next man, then you should probably try this. It smells that good. Isimiyaki Lo Disi Por Om Vetiver. This next one was a random rack store pickup that I got for $20. You can find it for a little bit more than that, but not much more, right around 30 bucks from Discounters Online. And to be honest with you, I think in many ways it's superior to Dylan Blue because that's what it reminds me of the most. This is fashionable, I believe is how you pronounce that. Riviera Eau de Parfum. So this is basically a spicy shower gel aquatic. It's got the smoky, ambery nuance to it. Like I said, I relate it very much to Dylan Blue, though it doesn't smell exactly like Dylan Blue. It very much reminds me of it. Great atomizer, loads of spices here. It's a very woodsy, spicy, slightly earthy type of smell, still with all that blue fragrance mass appeal that you would come to expect with something that looks like this because it's clearly a blue fragrance. They made sure to bottle it correctly. Nice looking cap, quality atomizer, the bottle's solid, and the smell is great. Performance is above average. This is another one that kind of falls in that six to eight hour range in longevity, closer to the latter portion in the eight hour range. And this will probably pull a compliment or two for you. Admittedly, I've only gotten one compliment in the cup few times that I've worn it, but it smells absolutely incredible to me. I continue to be impressed that I paid $20 for this, where if I wouldn't have told you a price, showed it to you and let you smell it, I can almost guarantee you would have guessed that it's probably in the realm of like $40 to $60 from discounters, which doesn't sound expensive, but when you compare it to the $20, 20 to $30 range that you can get it for, it smells like a hell of a bang for your buck bargain. This stuff smells great. One of the better blue fragrances that doesn't really get any love, in my opinion. And that's Fashionable Riviera. This next one I just recently got, wore to the beach the other day. I'm working on a full review for it. So for those of you that don't want to spend the money on Lobola Parfum and you'd rather spend, say, $34, you might want to check out Mandarina Duck Vita Loca for him. Now, it's not going to perform on the same level. This is an eau de toilette that smells like Le Beau Le Parfum, which is technically an eau de parfum, even though it's called Le Parfum. This is about a six-hour fragrance on my skin. Surprised me in projection and sillage. And it's got, in, so very few substitutions in the notes. Instead of bergamot, you have mandarin orange. Instead of cypress, you have mint and sage, but aside from that, pretty much the same thing. Pineapple, coconut, florals, sweet tonka bean. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. Very tropical, super easy to like. Man, this one smells good. This is one of the best cheapy pickups I've had this year, and it's a very recent pickup. I just bought it from Fragrance Buy within the last two weeks, 
and I've only worn it twice, three times that day, but three times so far, and I'm absolutely loving this one, guys. So this was a no-brainer to feature in this video, just on scent alone, and it is a decent performer. So if you like the tropical sweet fragrances, you like Le Beau Le Parfum, but don't want to spend the like $100 range to get the 4.2 uh, ounce, even when it is in stock, for a fraction of that, about a third roughly, you can get this and it will do just as well. The only thing is you got to temper your expectation and performance. It's not quite the performer that Le Bola Parfum is, but it's still no slouch. But it smells incredible. That's what's most important. It's only 34 bucks, And it's Mandarina Duck Vida Loca for him. This is another one that I just got. I literally, as I'm recording this, released the review video today. I've worn it a few times. I love it. It smells like Sprite. It smells like a lemon lime soda. It's from Paris Corner. It's called Vibrant Vetiver Delight. This is fan freaking tastic. Yeah, it's a vetiver fragrance, but there's nothing earthy about this, as fresh and woodsy as it gets. And even though lime isn't listed, it's bergamot, lemon, orange blossom, things like that. It smells like lemon lime. You do get a little bit of, there's some floral notes here, but I think the cyclamen is the floral that stands out because it adds to this watery, juicy feel. There's a little bit of fizziness to it, even though there's no aldehydes or anything, to kind of give that carbonation feel that you would get from, say, a 7-Up or a Sprite with a nice woodsy, musk clean, super clean, musky tone as it dries. I'm such a fan of this one. I literally wore it yesterday. I wore it during the day. I wore it out the shower. I'm such a huge fan of this. This is one of the best smelling fresh fragrances I have picked up and put my nose on this year. I strongly encourage you to check this one out, if nothing else, for the scent profile. I get about six hours of longevity, kind of like the Mandarina Duck fragrance. It's average performance. It's not winning any awards here. Um, I can see Siage kind of surprised me on this one too for about three hours, but this is good stuff, guys. I would strongly encourage you to check this out. If you're not the type for the vetivers, the earthy vetivers and such, kind of like how we talked about the Issy fragrance, this really doesn't have that much vetiver going on in it. It's really what provides the woody nuance to go with some cedar. And it's just a beautiful lemon lime soda. That's really what it smells like to me. It smells awesome. That might not sound appealing to you, but I'll be damned. I love the way it smells. And that's Paris Corner, Vibrant Vetiver Delight. Speaking of clean and musky, this might be the best clean musk fragrance in my collection. It's even named that. From Authenticity Perfumes, this is clean musk. This is hard not to like. This is technically the base for Summer Vibes 4.0, which is what I think their best fragrance is. So this is their number two fragrance is how I look at it. But when it comes to a clean musky fragrance, which is typically the type of musks I like, it's clean, it's soapy, it's fresh laundered type of smell, aromatic, soft and woodsy. This is a good one. It's 50% oil. It performs really well. Super, super clean fragrance. Like I said, they use it as a base on some of their fragrances, most notably and most detectable is in Summer Vibes 4.0, which is their mint pineapple fragrance. This is this is a great fragrance. This is, like I said, my second favorite from the house, and as a standalone, it might be the best clean musk that I have. I strongly encourage you, if you like more simplistic with your fragrance, just a great everyday clean smell that won't be offensive, especially if you dial the sprays back, because it is pretty strong for what it is. You have to be mindful of that. It's a high oil concentration of some very volatile oils, so it's still pretty loud while being very long lasting. This is definitely one to check out, and it's like 40 bucks before the discount code below. It's worth checking out. You can always get samples too and sample first, but if you like clean musk, you want simplified and easy going and Nothing crazy, no wild accords or anything, just clean. You're going to want to check this one out. It smells that good if you like clean musk. I think it's probably the best one I have. Authenticity Perfumes, clean musk. This next one very much surprised me when I bought it this year. So it's no secret if you're a regular on the channel that I'm a huge fan of the YSL Y line. And there's an argument back and forth within myself for YEDT's old formula versus Y Le Parfum. For which one's my favorite? And it's because of the freshness and the aldehydes. That's what really does it for me. That's the two that embody that in that scent DNA. Well, I get a lot of that from Artisan Teal from John Barbados. This is saltwater aquatic, clean and musky with a little bit of that fruitiness. It smells like the more beach vibe, summertime, carefree, marine take 
on the Y DNA. It's a water lily note that provides the aquatic feel with some straight up sea salt. It's got this sea salt iodine feel to it. Clean and musky. Average performance. I love the way this one smells. It's so good. If you like the Y line, you will like this. You will like this. It smells like it belongs in the Y line, to be completely honest with you. And the bottle is beautiful. This teal colored glass wrapped in this wicker with the metal cap. It's it's really nice. 4.2 ounce, 40 some odd bucks, 30 some odd bucks. I forgot exactly. It's a solid fragrance. I actually prefer it to XX Artisan, which this is a flanker to XX Artisan. I think the teal flanker is superior. Not as rich. It's fresher overall, but I think that works to its favor. This is just such a great smell. If you're a fan of why, I think this would have been a superior Eau Fresh flanker. Like, I know they had their Eau Fresh flanker, but to be honest with you, I kind of think this would have worked better as their Eau Fresh flanker because it just ties in so well to what I would think why Eau Fresh should smell like, if I'm being totally honest here. Beautiful stuff, underappreciated, worth checking out. It smells great. It's John Barbados XX Artisan Teal. This is a new release from 2023, came out earlier in the year. You have to like Rose. It basically smells like Hawaiian Punch mixed with Rose. Shout out to my man Derek for put, Dedrick for putting that in my head because it really does smell like Hawaiian Punch mixed with Rose. It's Latafa's Bade Al Oud Sublime. So this is supposedly a clone of a KLE fragrance. I believe it's a Eden Apple, Juicy Eden Juicy Apple, something along those lines. I've never smelled that, but this is awesome. It's a nuclear performer, first and foremost. The first time I wore it, I wore six sprays and it was too much. I do four sprays now and it's still super strong at four sprays. But apple lychee rose, main things you're going to get here. That's so good. It definitely leans feminine. Don't get me wrong. It is a unisex fragrance. There's a lot of guys that watch this channel in the community that have bought it and love it. And or if they found it too feminine, they gave it to their lady and their lady loves it because somebody in your household is going to like this fragrance. It is that good. It is that jam. Any hype it's garnered, it deserves because now it's even cheaper. You can get it for 29 bucks. It is now eclipsed in the sub $30 price point with real performance and just a great smell. It doesn't come across as super synthetic to me, but you have to like fruity roses and that's what's going to make it lean a bit feminine. But guys that like rose or like fruity fragrances, you know, fruity smelling sweet fragrances, you're going to like this. This is an absolute certified affordable banger in my opinion. This literally took my breath away in the live stream unboxing. Some of you watching this right now can remember that moment because you were watching that live stream. This, one of the best smelling cheap fragrances of the year, easily. It's Body Out Oud Sublime from Latafa. Now there's an argument for everybody's favorite version of Chrome. And while this isn't exactly my favorite, when I really break it down into just the smell, take performance, versatility situations, take all that out of it and just look at how does it smell? Probably the best smelling one would be Azaro Chrome Aqua, in my opinion, because you get that nice aquatic feel. There's a nice citrus at the top, watery marine tone that's not too salty, very much an aquatic fragrance that the name would indicate. And the teal colorway represents a mixture with some greens as a mate note. There's a fresh green feel to this one. It's musky. It's very, very good. I mean, it's very good. Still no slouch in performance, but I'm factoring in just the smell. This smells better than the extreme. This smells better than the parfum. This smells better than the eau de parfum. This smells better than the intense. I could go on and on. It smells better than pure to me. To me, this is the best smelling version of Chrome. It's still a straight up cheapie, no matter what bottle size you want to get. It's worth checking out and it doesn't get the kind of love it once did. You know, three, four years ago, this was getting some love. Then Extreme came around, the EDP, the Parfum. On to the next is kind of the mentality in the online fragrance community. But there's real good gems out there that still deserve spotlight that should never go away. And this is absolutely, absolutely one of them. I love smelling this. I need to put it back in the rotation myself because it does smell that good. And spending time with it right now for this video really makes me want to spray this one on. One of the best smelling cheapies I have, period, regardless of the year, is a Zaro Chrome Aqua. Well, if you like Iris, you'll like this. You can get it in the sub $50 price point. It's a beastly fragrance. It's not as synthetic and sweet as its original that it's flankered from. It's Yupon Le Parfum specifically. The Le Parfum 
is incredible. I haven't tried the EDP. I know somebody's going to ask. I haven't tried it. So this is like a two-stage fragrance. So the sweet and floral you get in the start is not the same sweet and floral chord you get as it dries. So it starts off with this praline, like candy, dessert-like sweetness. And the, the iris comes across like an earthy violet smell. Not super powdery. Still powdery, but not super powdery. As it dries, it becomes a creamy vanilla sweetness with a soft, more makeup bag appropriate powdery, flowery iris smell that you would expect from a designer fragrance. This is so good. There it is. Oh, God, it's so unique. It does have a little bit of a resemblance to the original, but guys, if you don't like the original like me, there's hope. I'm telling you, I was floored the first time I smelled this. I just bought this randomly blind on a whim from Amazon, and then it, I... I reviewed it put some hype behind it it went away for a while it's back and it's that jam it's perfect for rolling into the autumn and winter seasons at the recording of this absolutely worth checking out if you want a beastly iris fragrance that doesn't smell like all the other iris fragrances because you'll see people comparing on some of the forums this to different versions of stronger with you faint guys faint that if you put this next side by side with any of the stronger with you's there's much more difference between this and any of those than there are similarities. Some common ground, sure, but not the same fragrance. Please don't think you're buying a Strong With You flanker if you go into this one. This is a gorgeous iris that deserves some love because it smells absolutely phenomenal. It's Youp Om Le Parfum. Last but not least is for those of you that like a good spicy, smoky fragrance. Now, I've never smelled YSL Baby Cat. But I'll tell you what, if it's at minimum on par with its clone, which I'm sure it's probably better than its clone, then I should try it. Because Paris Corners Emir Rifakat is stunning. Let me get this to focus. This is absolutely freaking stunning, guys. This is delicious. Full of elemi, pink pepper, black pepper, saffron, olibanum. There's a little bit of vanilla in woods. But loads of pepper, creaminess, sweetness, and smoke. The Olibanum's nice and present. This is so, so good. Paris Corner killed it. I don't know how accurate it is to, to Baby Cat. It might be wildly different from Baby Cat. Because I've never smelled the original. But this by itself, this as a standalone to judge, smells incredible. This is one of the best smelling affordable fragrances I've put my nose on this year. But this is a beautiful, spicy, smoky creamy fragrance and it's just it stands on its own as pure magnificence from the scent profile stand, uh, standpoint and it's perfectly unisex but it does lean a bit masculine so I don't know who or what baby cats marketed to I would think it's marketed as unisex I would do the same with this though it does have a little bit of a masculine lean look at the thickness of this glass this is some good stuff I would strongly encourage you to get your nose on this performance is well above average. I wouldn't call it a monster, but it's kind of like a baby beast where it keeps going and going. But as long as you're moderate with the sprays, it won't overwhelm you or anyone. Maybe it reacts better on your skin than mine, and it would. I don't know. But above average projection and sillage with great longevity, beautiful smell, affordable. I don't know what more you can ask for with Paris Corners Emir Rufaka. Well, that's the 10. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. Because I do appreciate all the feedback. And I love hearing from you guys. What of these 10 have you tried? Do you have any experience with any of them? I'm very curious on your take. Again, I'll have links to everything down in the description if you're interested in checking any of these out. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the 10 I featured in this video and you give them a spray now, there's always that chance you might thank me later. Have a good one, guys.